All right, welcome to the June 5 Friday Awesome 10X class. Uh, the title is Bad Guys Finish Strong Company Profile Esports Entertainment Group Convergence of Gambling and Esports. If you have any questions, uh, make sure to uh, put your questions on the comments or in the chat in the Zoom session. This is a free Friday class. Um, and if you're posting in social media, use hashtag 10x global investing or hashtag awesome10x. We are broadcasting live in awesome10x YouTube channel. So make sure to subscribe for our daily updates. Uh, every day, Nikki would do a 1 p.m. daily PSE market update and uh, at 1.30, a daily global chart attack. And every Friday, 5.30, we're broadcasting live the session in the YouTube channel. <clears throat> All right. Let's start, Nikki. Yeah, okay. Let me speak. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, today's topic is Bad Guys Finishing Strong. My name is Nikki Yu. You're watching from Manila, Philippines. We are live streaming uh, our Friday class to everyone uh, who has the link. So, uh, okay, let's see. <clears throat> we have to discuss two things today, Bad Guys Finish Strong and Esports Entertainment Group. My name is Nikki Yu. I am a Chartered Market Technician. You can follow me on Twitter at Places Trader. We have our website, awesome10x.com, and you can follow us on YouTube, Awesome10x. We have these 24-7 products, uh, Live Assisted Trading Guidance for Philippines and U.S. stock markets. You can start even if you have zero knowledge. You can just watch our videos for free. And if you want us to guide you, you can also join our membership fee. Uh, it's 2,000 pesos a month or $40 a month for those who are Americans there. Uh, 10,000 pesos for six months. It's roughly around $200. Now we've got the Zoom live classes and every Monday to Friday, it is recorded. And this Friday is a free class, 5.30 to 6.38 p.m. Thank you for watching our, week, uh, our Friday class. So uh, this captures a lot of the things that are happening this week, I would say this month. Weakness is provocative. Investors have recently began to aggressively buy stocks battered by COVID-19 for seemingly no reason other than their prices are low at a time when market leaders are trading around 52-week highs. It doesn't matter, at least not much, if their earnings estimates or business prospects fail to match the enthusiasm. There is a general hope for improvement. So according to a new survey, if you look at data, Americans are unlikely to go back to movie theaters, sports events, hotels, air travel, public transit until at least three months have passed. The data fits with the experiences of other countries showing that lifting the restrictions on businesses, the reopening, and personal movement are not sufficient enough to restore economic activity to pre-virus levels. The virus is the problem, and until people feel safe, many will be unwilling to go out and spend in person. However, if you look at the weak energy, the spider fund, uh, this is a ETF, exchange traded fund, has risen from your March lows, 25 to 41. We're loading. I hate it when my, my slides are not uh, appearing everything. Wait, Papa. Teka lang, guys. Something wrong with my slides. guys that's like too much okay the other slides that you're not seeing are actually like the financials rallying the airlines rallying for the week so those are your bad guys finishing strong don't worry i can show them in uh in another etf 
let me just see why it's not sh short. Oh, okay. okay, it's not smooth, it's not showing. But uh, you could see that uh, these are charts, your XLE, that would be your energy fund, XLF, your financial fund, JETS, your airline fund. Um, you've got emerging markets rallying. Okay, let me see if this one can be presented. So for the week, of course, uh, those Filipinos would be aware that the Philippine market staged a strong rebound this week. EPHE, which is listed in the U.S., that would be your MSCI Philippines, is up 16% for the week. Among the emerging markets, that is actually a very, very strong move. Uh, IADO is actually Indonesia, also a strong move. IDX is still Indonesia, so that's like 12% for the week. FNI, that is India and China, that's Chindia, that would be 9%. You've got uh, essentially... EWZ is also Brazil, strong, strong move this week. So you can see EPHE gone from 24 to 28, very strong recovery. Indonesia, 16 to 20. Something wrong with my loading. Yeah. Sorry for those charts. Can, uh, they're, they're not able to be viewed. Okay, so uh, for the week, the only... ETF, exchange traded fund that actually beat Philippines as a triple leverage bull position on the emerging markets, which is EDC. EDC is up 23% for the week. Almost uh, all the emerging markets up about 5%, 7% emerging markets. So uh, it tells you that this week, quote unquote, the bad guys are finishing strong. How do we know this? Because Taiwan, which is least uh, Taiwan, which is the strongest uh, country when it comes to COVID cases, is just up two percent for the week. So uh, there are stocks to own for the short run, and there are stocks to own for the long run. Right now, people are very much trading this recovery. U.S. states are showing early signs of job market recovery. This is a percentage decline in initial jobless claims last five weeks of pandemic versus the first five weeks. So there are less people losing jobs so far. Uh, states are showing early signs of job market recovery. Rhode Island, Vermont, Michigan, Montana, Idaho, lesser people filing claims of uh, jobless. No, take note that we already have 40 million uh, jobless claims. So uh, the fact, or I think it was 39 million. So uh, the point is, we are, the fact that there are less and less people trying to uh, file their initial jobless claims means that the market is trying to recover. For the week, as you could see, it would be uh, the weakest link rising. So you've got energy names for this week up 7%. One month, you could see basic materials, financials, industrials, uh, consumer cyclicals, energy names up very strongly. With your healthcare and consumer defensive names being your kulala, uh, being your uh, weakest, that would tell you that this week is really uh, all about the bad guys. It's all about the battered names, all the weakest companies. I'll show you the charts later. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, so, um, so yeah, let's go to the charts first. So uh, this is what you weren't able to see a while ago. Para lang, just so you know, what do I mean with the bad guys finishing strong? Let's go to charts, full feature charts. Wait up. So um, JETS, of course, JETS is uh, an airline ETF. You could see that most of these companies uh, in the airlines business are down 60, 70 percent, 32 to 12. It rebounded from about 14 to 19. Uh, that is a month. But if you look at it from a daily standpoint, that is a breakout from about 17. So that is like from 11 to 19, 80 percent move. Uh, as we said, your weakest link in the market has been um, the strongest for this past few weeks or months. We are seeing that sympathy love happening, bad guys finishing strong. 
when you say jets, you're talking about Delta Airlines. So you can see Delta Airlines, United Airlines, American Airlines, Expedia, Boeing, Booking. When you're talking about uh, movie theaters, not uh, there's no people in the gym. We're talking about Planet Fitness, bad guys rallying up. Uh, Planet Fitness is a gym. Uh, Live Nation, which is uh, your concert. You can see rallies. Um, this week has been met with a lot of like energy names rising. We're seeing bad guys oceaneering. Uh, $2 to about $7, almost times three. Bad guys, this week you saw casinos reopen. Uh, this is the biggest, uh, this, the sector has been moving strongly. 35 to 95 for Wynn Resorts, MGM. MGM Resorts opened already, 6 to 21. So you could see that after like a substantial, almost 80% decline, they have been rallying almost 200 to 300% from their lows. Las Vegas Sands, just so you can see, from about 32 to 52. Caesars, strong move, $3 to $12. Boyd National Gaming, $6 to $24. Penn National Gaming, boom. This is a super V-shaped recovery from about $4.50 to $37.37. So uh, in general, you could see that the bad stocks have been really rallying. When we're talking about financials, financials rallying this week, the bad names, we've seen Goldman Sachs breaks uh, the $7.86 from about $2.50 falling to $1.30. Now it's about $214. You could see uh, Wells Fargo. Rallies to $30 from about 22. What are the bad names? Bad companies, financials. Okay, you can see JP Morgan's rallies up, Bank of America. So in, 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 in general, uh, retail, consumer discretionary, all of the charts have gone up. So uh, from about 10 to 17, PVH. Calvin Klein, the, the ticker for Calvin Klein and Tommy Hilfiger is PBH, uh, Capri Holdings. So these are your bad guys. Very strong recoveries from their lows. It's around 100 to 100%. So um, what we're seeing for the week is continuous week and month. It's really continuous trend uh, for your bad guys. And um, that flow is coming into the even the worst stocks in the planet Earth. So uh, worst companies in planet Earth would be um, Philippines, Brazil. So uh, these perception of these companies being bad are um, getting, uh, getting some loving. The badder you are, the more you're loved. So uh, you get the love. So this is a move, 16% uh, move for the Philippines. 12% uh, move for Indonesia. And then if you're uh, strong, Strong company like my MSCI Taiwan, this week you're just up 2%. So you could see that the technology firms this week are just uh, very small rallies already because they've rallied all the way from the lows. Very strong V-shaped recovery. So what you're seeing is that the strong names have gone up. Now it's the weaker names that are trying to catch up. That's what you're seeing in the market. Now, um, Given this uh, performance of the market, we'd like to discuss in our company profile this topic. Okay, so uh, we could see that in Reddit, a lot of the young ones have asked GMDL, Esports Entertainment Group, what are your thoughts? Firstly, um, uh, yeah, so it, it hit the market a month ago. They deal in esports gambling. What do you think about it? So uh, a lot of new traders coming into the market. We see that the Robinhood traders added about 800,000 accounts in just March and April. And most of them are newbies. We're seeing them new to trading. Um, they're more into Reddit, subreddits. Uh, they're in Robinhood apps. 
Walter, uh, so of course, the people who watch Breaking Bad, so they are often uh, doing memes, TikToks. So uh, they said, wow, I, it went up again. Walter Jr., every time I check my Robinhood app. Simpson predicts the, predicts the stock market, go Genus. Genus went from about 30 cents to almost like 10 times, $3 in a month, something like that. I'll show you the charts. Uh, so a lot of people in, uh, in Robin Hood in, uh, are showing, watching Genus, this will ex excess far rocket after you just sold them. At least I have PNDI. So um, you could see that a lot of people are asking esports, esports betting. So esports betting is here and now. What's going to happen with Counter Strike? What's going to happen for DraftKings? DraftKings uh, already went 500% from its IPO in just two months. How to get started in esports betting? Is it profitable? Is it worth it? Yesterday, June 4, Roundhill, which is a very uh, strong exchange traded fund, launched the very first Roundhill sports betting and iGaming ETF, aptly named Bets, B E T Z. It's an online sports betting on the online casino uh, sector. Last year, they also um, made the esports and digital entertainment ETF called NERD. NERD is up 28% since inception. Bet's holdings include sports bookies, DraftKings, Flutter Entertainment. Flutter is listed in London Stock Exchange. Flutter owns Poker Stars, FanDuel, uh, betting technology companies such as Cambi. Dan, Bartu Stores, Parent, Penn National. Uh, so are uh, the Round Hill Sports Betting and uh, iGaming ETF. This is DraftKings. You could see from $10 to $40. That's about 400%, almost like that. This is um, a monthly chart. GAN Limited uh, just recently, May 6, IPO $8.50, went to 26. There's a pullback. Looking to buy here at about 19 to 20 if there is a dip. Flutter Entertainment is listed in London. London Stock Exchange all-time highs from 5,000 to 10,000 uh, a few months long. Cambi starting in the last three months from 60 to 180. Penn National Gaming, uh, of course, the parent company of Barstool Sports. Those who are uh, watching on YouTube, you probably know Dave Portnoy. He is the CEO founder of uh, Bar Tool Sports. He's actually uh, one of the, if not the most popular YouTube show. So um, yeah, uh, so far the found the, the owner of that Bar Tool Bar Stool Sports, uh, we could see the three dollars sixty to thirty seven dollars. That's like ten times money in three months. Uh, so let's read. Let's read some news. While the esports events have still been canceled due to the COVID, most competitions are still taking place online, meaning no one has to put themselves at risk to continue playing. The, the digital nature of esports makes this incredibly easy to do. This has resulted in many fans who normally bet on traditional sports turning their attention to the world of esports and betting on competitive gaming. All of our key performance indicators have been through the roof, says Kintian Martin, CEO of Lockbox, an esports gambling site. Uh, for those who are not aware, two companies are very strong on your esports gambling. It would be Unicorn, U-N-I-K-R-N, and Lockbox. Lockbox, the turnover has risen to almost 13 times seen since November 2019. Deposits are up 10 times since then, as well as an increase in registrations, an increase in average bet size, almost double since February. But it's not just customers who are focusing on esports betting. With no sports to look for sponsors, investors are also investing more into the esports side of things, capitalizing on the boom that is currently happening. Clearly, it's a challenging time for many people across the world. But esports and gaming is a welcome distraction, an increase in customers and betting activity, not just from uh, customers, but also investors realizing that esports is a COVID proof name uh, and uh, is also a uh, recession proof that uh, will not affect traditional sports. 
Typically, in most esports, it's agreed that when matches are played online, there's more, more potential for major upsets, be it because of technical issues, poor connections, simply players. While this certainly makes more interesting matches, it helps the bookmakers who credit this as another reason for their improved profits during this time. Now, of course, the, the pandemic will not last, last forever, but for bookmakers, bookies like Lockbox, who specializes in esports, it's clear that the pandemic actually has a long-term benefit for their business. The lack of traditional sports has prompted more fans to consider esports. It's realistic to expect that when sports eventually returns, a lot of those fans will go back to the games they know best. However, the potential of esports betting is well documented, and these past few months have brought that into sharper focus. Now, um, I was discussing not just esports, but also sports betting. For those who are sports fans, you know that NBA uh, sp uh, will start this July 31. So NBA is back. Sports betting is also legal already in 25 states in USA. That, th that describes why a lot of these casinos have been rising, really V-shaped reversals from their March lows. More news to tell you, of course, um, there is a multi-year partnership between Harris Blitzer Sports and Entertainment providing safe and transparent peer-to-peer esports betting to Dignitas fans via Vi.gg. Dignitas is an international esports team with one of the most iconic and recognizable, recognizable brands in the professional gaming industry, fielding teams in seven of esports' largest and most popular games. Esports, uh, ticker symbol GMBL, Gamble, a licensed online gambling company with a specific focus on esports wagering and 18 plus gaming, is announcing that there is a multi year partnership to provide that safe and transparent P2P. Um, Dignitas is the esports organization of HBSE, including a portfolio for Philadelphia 76ers, New Jersey Devils, Crystal Palace, Prudential Center, one of the world's top ranked venues located in Newark, New Jersey. Um, HBSE is owned by an investor group led by managing partners Josh Harris, the co founder and senior managing director of Apollo Global Management LLC, as well as David Blitzer, the global head of Blackstone's Tactical Opportunities Group. Now, uh, first North American Tier 1 esports partnership for Vi.gg sets a new benchmark. You have to read all of the news, so I need to like tell you everything. Um, okay, so uh, let it be. So uh, just bear with me. Vi.gg. Vi.gg is a P2P model. It's much more attractive because an esports fan always wins as opposed to a house model where odds are heavily attacked stack against fans. So this is a peer-to-peer -peer betting platform, the very first and most transparent esports betting exchange. It's fully reporting to SEC in the United States. Player safety features create a fun but responsible esports betting experience for fans. Now, um, so there, uh, this is a premier destination for fans to engage with games they truly like to engage in. So uh, for those who are playing CSGO, CSGO, Counter-Strike Go, you can uh, play and uh, bet. Fans, uh, fans can bet. So there's like esports bets, games, fantasy games. So uh, you, could, you could bet on Dota 2. You could bet on League of Legends. You can bet on Fortnite, Counter-Strike Go, Overwatch League, Call of Duty League. This is the website, vi.gg esports bets. That is the... P2P platform of Gamble, GMBL. Vi.gg offers bet exchange style wagering on esports events in a licensed, regulated, and secured platform to the global esports audience. Take note that we had more than 200 million viewers in Fortnite Championship League 2019. So uh, there is a lot of viewers, and some of those viewers might like to bet on who wins. Now, these are the legit games that they can wager on. Counter-Strike, Global Offensive, League of Legends, Dota 2, Call of Duty, Overwatch, PUBG, Hearthstone, StarCraft 2. Now, you might think that one of the ways to bet on esports is through the game publishers and the game developers. Uh, CSGO, of course, is uh, Valve. Valve is not listed. League, League of Legends, uh, something that made C-Limited 
net is Tencent, pretty much a uh, leader in the games. Dota 2, of course, um, this is licensed by your Tencent, also licensed by your C-Limited. Call of Duty and Overwatch, PUBG, these are Activision Blizzard names. Uh, really, uh, even a Hearthstone. So those have really made Activision Blizzard a, um, a safe bet for the video games, rallying from about forty-five to as much as seventy-five dollars this year. Uh, Buy.gg announced affiliate marketing partnerships with one hundred ninety esports teams from around the world, and expects that number to increase furthermore. Esports Entertainment Group Gamble is a licensed online gambling company with a specific focus on esports wagering. So uh, we're talking only esports when it comes to esports entertainment group. So this is a pure esports play. Unlike DraftKings and Flutter Entertainment, they you can bet on sports. Let's say NBA, NHL, uh, NFL, all of those types. So this is purely video games. Now is esports betting legal in USA? The answer is yes. Some states offer legal esports betting. Nevada, New Jersey, Tennessee, uh, West Virginia have all clearly deemed sports betting, esports betting to be legal. Uh, in 2018, that was a watershed moment for the sports betting as the U.S. has allowed and legalized betting. So uh, sports betting is a $150 billion marketplace. Uh, with about 20% of that $150 billion going to uh, esports, or uh, sorry, particularly to sports betting. So the point is, it is a strong industry to be in, uh, and it is legal. Now, the U.S. has 50 states. So far, there's about 25 states that have legalized this. And with the COVID pandemic, uh, all the re all the government would want revenues taxes, and I think it's a voluntary tax for people uh, who wants to gamble. So I think that all those other states will uh, be encouraged, uh, especially in COVID time, to legalize uh, sports betting, esports betting, uh, because it will increase revenues to their government uh, for their uh, for their state. Now, for those who don't know what are esports, esports stands for electronic sports. Uh, you could play games. Uh, these are, of course, battle arenas, multiplayer, mobile, online battle arena, MOBA. So uh, we're talking about these games, StarCraft 2, League of Legends, Hearthstone, Counter-Strike, Global Offensive, Dota, also known as Defense of the Ancients. So uh, there's a lot of games, but those are the most popular ones. In fact, uh, esports betting uh, has become a global lifeline for casino operators. Take note that during the COVID pandemic, um, a lot of the casinos had to shut down and they actually just started opening up June 4. Actually, they just opened yesterday. Uh, so all of the casinos have been rising due to the three opening stands. But also during the time that it was closed, um, esports betting was their lifeline. I'd also say that in 2018, 2019, ever since the legalization of sports betting, uh, we have seen consecutive increase in revenues for Las Vegas, Nevada. Take note that in the last few years, um, gaming in Las Vegas have been going down in a decline. Sports betting has been rising 65%, 100%. So you could see that the growth wave is in sports betting and esports betting. And you now have a way to play purely on those themes. If you just want to bet on the sports and esports betting per se, and not that, uh, not the traditional casino wagers. So uh, you could see that uh, e NASCAR. We're talking about car racing. Uh, car racing can be done online. We're talking about a similar amount of betting. Handling what was bet on Belarus soccer box in Nevada. That tells you that this is a big, big market. Russian table ten tennis remains the most popular betting market because of the sheer number of matches. So esports betting has been more than just a buzz. Indeed, uh, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Rocket League have broken concurrent player records. Was talking to my uh, brother. He asked me how much the champions on Dota had. I think 
the tournament uh, total tournament price was something closer to about nearing 150 billion dollars. Uh, Fortnite gave a million, sorry, not billion, 150 million dollars uh, for Dota. And then um, there's about 85 million dollars in 2019 tournament prizes. Uh, of course, you have a lot of uh, players winning. So uh, the top prize got $3 million in Fortnite. Dota had around $10 million prize for the first placer. So a lot of people are really uh, becoming rich uh, by being an esports uh, player. Uh, actually, I will show to you later that there is a scholarship now for the best esports players just like how it is with basketball. So there's like a, an athletic scholarship given uh, to, East, to professional esports gamers. Uh, Flutter Entertainment uh, listed in London includes these companies, Betfair, Paddy Power, FanDuel. FanDuel just merged with the Stars Group, which includes Skybet. This is the largest um, online betting company in the world. So if you want like the most legit you got to go flutter, FLTR. FLTR is in London Stock Exchange, L in, in LSE. So ticker is FLTR. Um, so as brick and mortar casinos have closed, we're seeing this shift to the online casino world. And these are your top picks. So esports, the digital nature of gaming has allowed for a smoother pivot. So uh, you're seeing a secular trend here. Steam has achieved two new records. So uh, this was during March 30. People have been uh, breaking records during the lockdown. Self-isolation leads to a surge in home gaming. Uh, when you look at most uh, gaming companies, gaming stocks, they were all COVID proof during the, during the season. Uh, Activision Blizzard, Tencent, uh, Mobile Gaming, Zynga, uh, Electronic Arts uh, shared that their Apex Legends Season 5 had a very good show, had a very good showing. So uh, definitely very strong for your gaming names. Now, um, of course, most esports tournaments are, some of them have live events and that had to be canceled. But even so, they can still continue tournaments. So there's still going to be League of Legends Championship Series. There's going to be ESL Pro Leagues, ESL 1, Los Angeles, Dota 2 Major uh, without, without a hitch. So uh, all things considered, with plenty of upcoming events, sports books are beginning to develop a serious appetite for esports. Um, it's a perfect storm. So uh, how do you play on the esports betting market? The esports betting market could end could be anywhere from about 10 billion, 20 billion. Some people are saying 40 billion, 100 billion dollars. Basically, nobody knows how big um, esports betting is. So uh, this article 2019 says that esports betting should explode to a total of 13 billion dollars by 2020. According to research, um, the growth of esports is based on the overall viewership and the amount of money that curiosity generates is huge. Sponsors, sponsorships, larger prize money, advertising. So you're you're aware that there's a Coca Cola uh, that's only it's like the, it's, their, it's their Red Bull Energy. So there's like a Coca Cola for gamers. It's like it's, it it has like it's more like Red Bull something like that for gamers. Um, a lot of names, Pepsi also has their energy drink for gamers, um, just to keep them more awake. Of course, uh, your apparel like Cloud9 is um, a, a big, an official endorser for Puma that actually explained why Puma sales have been rising because of their continuous um, focus on esports. So Puma went from 18 to 72 in three years just for focusing a lot as well as very good, uh, as not just for esports, but as well as very good um, production lines with Cara Levine, Selena Gomez, and really uh, a very strong focus on the entire esports market. Um, now to put the $12.9 billion figure in perspective, the total handle for sports books in Nevada on all the sports was $4.8 billion in 2017. So esports is three times larger than sports betting.
esports or video game competitions. We're talking about Dota, Dota Championship. Uh, the prices have been going higher and higher and higher. 25 million, 50 million, 100 million dollars, 200 million dollars. Gamble, this is the ticker. So uh, from about three, it went to about nine. Very fast, 300% in a month. You might want to enter here near about six. But even at 780, the market cap of esports entertainment is just 40 million dollars. So even at seven and eight, even at current level, I'd say that it can still continue higher if you're a long-term secular, uh, if you're playing the long-term wave here. So uh, esports entertainment is still a very new company, um, but they already have the licenses to conduct all the online gambling. Their company maintains offices in Malta. Um, they participate in multiplayer mobile PC video game tournaments for cash prizes. It is led by a team of industry professionals and technical experts. So um, they, it was a very small IPO. It was $8.4 million in the NASDAQ. Um, this is what I was saying that um, right now, did you know that over 280 colleges already feature esports scholarship programs? These programs operate similarly to traditional programs and sometimes operate out of the college's athletic department. Click the link below to enter the PA West Soccer E Cup. So, um, if this was the STEM, this is the scholarship for science, technology, and engineering and math. Take a look, esports and gaming. So, this is 50%. 13% is now being allocated to esports scholars. So, um, this is really a very big trend. You are aware that 2022 is the Olympics for esports. So this is a really big thing. Now, um, is Gamble a 40 million market company? Uh, can't do, does it have industry veterans? So uh, yes, they actually appointed June 4, Damian Matthews. Damian Matthews worked for um, big companies, uh, Credit Suisse, Bank of America. So really legit, um, he's, he's like a CFO for those companies. Now he's going to be a chairman of this audit committee for eSports Entertainment Group. You've got industry veterans, Magnus Lepanimi, uh, eSports Entertainment Group already formed with a New Jersey subsidiary to pursue a licensing strategy in USA for additional, um, receiving additional $1.86 million for exercise of warrants. They're beginning an onboarding of hundreds of affiliate partners to newly launched by that GG eSports betting platform. So uh, they appointed a former Activision Blizzard manager, John Brackens. For those who know, Atvi is a $100 billion company. Now, why would somebody, someone working for Activision go to esports entertainment if he doesn't think that this is a legit company? So um, they are seeing growth here. During his time, Mr. Bracken served as manager of network operations. He directed IT service management and hardware support for 4,500 plus servers, 50 million monthly active players. In addition to reducing server maintenance costs by 35%, he's also improved system uptime from 98 to 99%. So definitely he is, uh, his achievements include creation, execution, monetization, of League of Gods Asia esports series, as well as a licensing application for Malta Authority and Curacao e-gaming licenses. Um, he joined esports, so let's read what he said. I joined esports entertainment group because of Grant Johnson's commitment to provide a best-in-class betting experience to esports fans. Esports will be a leading source of entertainment in the next few years, eclipsing many major traditional sports. I want to be part of this movement. I want to help drive the growth of Buy.gg so that everyone can enjoy all of our services as intended. So um, I guess he will ensure that there will be no hangings, no delays. Because right now, um, there's uh, the Premier English, the English Premier League, the sports betting now, it's not just about who wins the game. You can actually now bet who makes the next shot, like which team will make the next shot. It's kind of like thinking that if you're watching a basketball game, who's going to get the most three-point shots? So right now, it's uh, the, the, the way that 5G 
uh, is making it easy, accessible for anyone to bet. The way that mobile, uh, it's really a confluence of mobile gaming, of sports, esports, and gambling going together. Those are secular trends plus 5G. So, uh, yes, yeah, so this one is important. They got a multi gaming license. It issued April 2020, April 30, 2020, effective for a 10 year term. So, uh, there, so they can be a licensed company. Let the games begin uh, by .gg. Watch out what we do for you here in 2020. Uh, they get Magnus, uh, vet in the industry veteran Magnus Lepanini. Magnus is a proven marketing executive of the gaming and esports industry with over more than two decades in gaming. Uh, since the beginning of his career, Lepanini has sold and managed global esports partnerships for major brands and partners like BenQ, Zoe, Electronic Arts, Activision, ESL, and the NBA. Prior to joining esports, Lepanini was global sales director for WeHype. Uh, he also served as sales director for a DreamHack, a Swedish production company specializing in esports entertainment tournament and other gaming convection, con conventions. So the company has a great pedigree that we continue to build on. We want to build trust with the players, fans, teams, blah, blah, blah. So uh, right now, you're betting on the founders. You're betting on the jockey rather than the horse. You're just betting right now on the team because uh, there's no... Ma they, they just started. It's essentially very new. It's a very new company. So um, they have a lot of collaboration. This is, of course, uh, Fortnite. Uh, so there, uh, with Travis Scott. For those who don't know Travis Scott, Travis Scott had a, a very, very powerful uh, following uh, on his concert in Fortnite. He had about more than 12 million on his first live stream. I think right now on YouTube, he's got like 50 million views on that Travis Scott Fortnite concert uh, during the pandemic. So um, that is a very good partnership. You could make cash bets. Vi.gg, of course, is also giving away tons of free CSGO skins uh, for the people who wants to uh, who wants to go enter. So uh, a lot of the people who are who, who play CSGO, some of them pay about eight dollars for the skin. So this is more like a customer acquisition style for Vi.gg. So bet with Vi esports betting gamers give away CSGO skin. So that's like an attraction for for the young ones. Uh, okay, so Damian Matthews, I said he's going to be the chairman of the audit committee. He has more than 25 years. Uh, he worked as the CFO of Qatar and Abu Dhabi Investment Company. He worked as a director for NZ Pacific Investments. He held senior finance positions with Commonwealth Bank of Australia, ABN AMRO, Royal Bank of Scotland, Credit Suisse. So uh, Matthews began his career at KPMG in London. He says that he is very excited uh, with his wealth of experience in finance uh, over the last 25 years. He's delighted to join the board of esports entertainment group at such a pivotal and exciting time. So, uh, so that is his uh, role. Now, esports betting has been seeing a significant advancement in the last several weeks, possibly in connection to the constellation of most traditional sports amidst COVID. But the approval at hand gives the U.S. gambling market another taste of esports betting with one of uh, CSGO's premier events. And with that, home, hopefully inching them closer to permitting wagers on esports on a full-time basis. Now, a lot of you know who Michael Burry is. Michael Burry, the author, um, I mean, he is the guy from The Big Short who made a lot of money during the subprime crisis. He has been give. Uh, he has been shoring up a lot of stakes in casinos, Las Vegas Sands, Wind Resorts. As you could see, Las Vegas Sands, Wind Resorts, all of the casinos went hundred percent up from their lows. So that's good for him. Uh, Cyan Management Equity Portfolio is highly levered to the U.S. economy, rebounding after COVID nineteen. Eight of his positions include Las Vegas Sands and Wind. These are considered as consumer discretion brand names. So just so you know, there are big firms that are betting on the reopening to become very strong, not just for your traditional casinos, uh, but your traditional casinos today have also a license on sports betting. And it wouldn't be surprising that they would also have licenses for esports betting. 
as I said, Cloud9 is a very important esports team. If you think about it, you have LA Lakers, you have Cleveland Cavaliers. So in esports, there's like 190 teams around the world. North American organization Cloud9 entered a strategic partnership with Guinevere Capital, majority shareholder in Excel Sports, operating Overwatch League franchise London Spitfire. Uh, of course, bookies are raking in a lot of money. This is the CEO of Lockbox. Lockbox uh, has reported 54% upswing in the new player registrars following the cancellation of English Premier League. Esports books have been surging on activity. Uh, Lockbox is, is going to have an IPO soon in Toronto Stock Exchange. Everything is actually available in Interactive Brokers, so don't worry. Uh, Interactive Brokers is an international brokerage firm. It allows you to handle anything from Canada, US, Toronto, la la la. Uh, that that said, I'm not I'm not an affiliate of Interactive Brokers. I'm just saying that all of these companies, it's easy to invest or trade them as long as you have an account with an international brokerage firm. Okay, so uh, in a conv in conversation with Kenten Martin, CEO of Lockbox, he said that the uptick is across the board globally. Almost every key performance indicator is up. The co the COVID outbreak is making things challenging for a lot of companies. But those of us here in esports are very fortunate that we are able to continue as usual. Um, immense potential of esports, according to Rivalry's Chief Marketing Officer Kevin Weimer, uh, the guy who handles the NASCAR uh, NASCAR racing, e NASCAR. Uh, mainstream media is putting out headlines on esports being the only sport now, and so on our end, we have traditional sport books that were. Previously, not too active, marketing esports downstream, looking to get involved. So um, there. NBA, of course, uh, you can play NBA, 2K, all of that. Um, NBA has a, has a license deal with DraftKings, but I think NBA also has a partnership with FanDuel. So uh, they have a lot of partnerships with, Fan, uh, with, with, with a lot of bookmakers, as well as Unicorn, as well as uh, Lockbox, all of these. Okay, so uh, it's not just one company. Uh, just so you know, DraftKings is already trading with a market cap of $26 billion, whereas GAN Limited is trading just $1 billion, and uh, Esports Entertainment Group is just trading for $40 million. So there's like a big gap in, if you think about these uh, valuations um, there. So uh, let's read. The most popular esports titles. Big three, CSGO, League of Legends, Dota 2. Um, second tier esports e titles, you've got the FIFA, Call of Duty, Rocket League, F1 esports. This is the typical uh, esports better. Most of them, 94% are, are, are men, males. And then they're usually 18 years old to 25. Although I would say that um, if we could get like a 16 year old below, maybe there are more. Uh, so, uh, but I think like right now, it's only uh, betting is only allowed for 18 year olds above. So 78%, it's a very young crowd. Nevada has really approved all of this esports betting. So uh, the Nevada Gaming Control Board has approved betting for Counter-Strike Global. Uh, and so a lot of uh, casinos are happy because of that. They could offer uh, for many people and they could offer it mobile. So uh, this used to be your eSports live tournaments. You've got the eSports arena and these people. So with COVID online. So you could live stream it, no problem. My internet connection is unstable. eSports entertainment group is US gambling expansion with their new Jersey firm. So eSports Entertainment has been establishing uh, gambling licenses throughout the USA. Since the Nevada is one of the most, um, Nevada and New Jersey are usually going to approve them because these are the more innovative um, states. They always are uh, New, New, New Jersey, Nevada, Pennsylvania. These are usually the first few states that will offer e-gaming licenses, uh, eSports licenses. So this is a good thing. Uh, Esports Entertainment went IPO on April 9. Then the, the, there's a no, uh, the US market represents a very big opportunity for us. Uh, we are now accepting wagers, including Canada, Japan, South Africa, 
Uh, we want to get uh, support for fantasy pools, fixed odds betting, 18 plus gaming on a global basis. Nevada authorized bets on ESL1 Birmingham. So that is a very strong move for the, this is English Premier League, uh, Esports League 1 Birmingham. So uh, yeah, there. So it's, it's a good thing. Uh, unspared by the effects of COVID, ESL1 Birmingham, a prominent event on the Dota 2 calendar, was reduced to a series of online regional competition. Matches are underway, being held until June 7. Nevada licenses opting to provide markets must first disclose their intent to the enforcement division. Now, you might ask, why are Nevada, New Jersey, all of them are approving these licenses? Because it's a very easy way for them to get billions of dollar revenues. So that's really the point. In COVID time, all of these government need taxes and what better way to get those taxes through sports booking, sports betting, esports betting. These are easy ways for them to get some revenues. Uh, as I said, Lockbox. Lockbox is the largest, uh, one of the largest esports bookies. So uh, Lockbox is intending to list itself on the Toronto Stock Market Exchange. Toronto Lockbox. Kentin Martin, uh, all of our key performance indicators, you might want to watch out for that once it lists. Lockbox is uh, speaking with investors, being led by Gravitas Securities, Beacon Securities, potential of esports betting is well documented. Lockbox is one of the bookmakers at the forefront of esports, holding a full gaming license, accepting bets in over 100 territories. All eyes will be locked on Lockbox when it comes to esports betting. New Jersey was forecasted to be a front runner in the development of esports betting in the U.S. after the PASPA repeal. Uh, take note that uh, 2018, uh, that was the watershed moment when U.S. finally legalized sports betting. So when you're saying legalizing of sports betting, we're talking not just about NBA, horse racing, NHL, NFL, but now also esports. Uh, so yun. it's a good thing. Nevada's regu regulatory body and its operators have done a splendid job bringing esports to the country's gambling capital. The diverse titles will draw attention, wagers to help the state and the rest of the country considering esports betting on a full time basis. Okay, let's go to the charts and questions. Okay, um, let's go for some news. Okay, as early as 2015, uh, a lot of people have been saying that uh, billions of dollars will be wagered on esports competition. Finally, uh, all these fantasy esports dreams are coming true. Uh, 26, 2015, odds are esports betting is here to stay. I'm just like showing you industry, no? Invest everyone is betting on the growth of esports wagering in 2018 for Overwatch League. Uh, for uh, for those Counter Strike, League of Legends, esports is evolving to focus on real money wagering. There, so people enjoy competition. Rocket League, ganyan. Okay, gambling today, June one, twenty twenty. Esports betting keeps on climbing. Esports gambling grows during pandemic, strengthened via NFL. EA Sports Extension, Madden's 21 details postponed. Sportsbooks began offering lines on video games such as Call of Duty, NBA 2020, even virtual NASCAR races. The explosion of this partnership is uh, not only about the continued success of Madden. So EA, five-year extension from 21 to 2021 to 2026 is roughly worth one and a half billion dollars. So uh, esports betting has really benefited your Sports books. Okay, uh, industry. So uh, let's look at entertainment group, esports entertainment group. So everyone is in the legalized gambling in this sense, legalized esports gambling. So uh, take a look. This is listed in NASDAQ, ticker GMBL. Uh, so again, let's go for the chart. Uh, we know we, we explained uh, electronic arts. So usually when people bet on sports, uh, on video games, they usually think of the titles, no? So NFL, NHL, the game publisher is electronic arts. 
Now, um, you could see that Electronic Arts uh, Hyper Mode 2010, uh, 2012 from about $10 to $150 had a correction to $70 when it was defeated by Fortnite. But uh, it proved that they had hit franchises that would continue. That's why they recovered since 2019, 2018. Uh, so far, actually, Electronic Arts has a lot of sports games uh, that are of course, uh, NFL and H NHL, diba? So uh, Madden, it's not uh, the NBA, it's still not open. So there is actually some upside for electronic arts. Uh, if you can enter somewhere at 115, very strong move 135. Now, um, since our topic is on uh, online sports betting, you want to bet on some infrastructure layers. When you say infrastructure layers, these are software as a service companies handling uh, pure play on bookies, like sports booking. So who handles those softwares? It would be GAN Limited. It would be International Game, IGT. International Game Technology. So yeah, strong recovery, 3 to 10. Uh, yeah, so any drops would still be bought. If you are here for the secular trend, you may want to buy this as a V-shaped move all the way to about 15. Uh, SGMS Scientific Games is the partner of Pennsylvania, a lot of like lottery, online lottery, all the softwares, uh, even like some sports. So Scientific Games is also an important key for infrastructure. You're looking at about 360 to 20. Any drops here at about 14 should be bought. You'll never know. It can go to 29, 30, or even go all-time highs back to $60. Um, so new companies, uh, Flutter, FLTR, FLTR in London. So uh, put this on your watch list. Any drops would be bought. This is a strong, uh, strong, strong company when it when it when it's about wagering on uh, online sports betting and esports. So uh, Gamble, of course, that would be our ticker symbol. So uh, this is a new company. Don't worry, don't worry about the, those things because it's a reverse uh, reverse company, no. So technically, they just started on May six. So yon, take a look. Pindis.com. So just a new company. So parang backdoor style. Uh, yon. So three to eight, forty million dollar company, GMBL. Uh, right now, there's no earnings, there's no sales, so it's kind of speculative. Uh, you're looking at a $46 million company, 300 employees, very new company, just started since April 24, but um, they have licenses right now and they have a good team. So uh, just put it in your watch list, you never know. Uh, just put it there. Uh, of course, you <clears throat> Yeah. So like this is the most uh, popular. Actually, this is the most popular in USA only because uh, DraftKings is listed. But uh, Flutter, which is more popular worldwide, is listed in London Stock Exchange. So uh, the, the DraftKings, $26 billion. Take a look at uh, Flutter, FLTR. FLTR. Uh, Flutter or the Stars Group. I'm going to show to you the Stars Group. This is uh, the more uh, the bigger the bigger entity. The Stars Group uh, is a Canadian gaming and online gambling company. Uh, shares are trading on Nasdaq Toronto Stock Exchange until its May 2020 merger with Flutter Entertainment. So uh, its parent organization is now Flutter. So uh, if you want it, this is it. All time highs Flutter Entertainment. F L T R. Their market cap today is let's see. LTR, Flutter. Mm, market cap $17 billion. So uh, this is actually cheaper, cheaper but with revenues. Their revenues uh, went from about 2 billion pounds to more than 4 billion pounds in 2020. So uh, very strong. Of course, people search for FanDuel. FanDuel is owned by Flutter. The Stars Group, so yeah, they own that. GVC has a partnership with MGM. Uh, good. 
a lot of ano, a lot of companies the, uh, the biggest if you are here for the blue chips you go for the stars group because uh, flutter entertainment is the bigger entity here okay uh so yon i just want to i want you to know all the best companies in the world so uh want you to put that on your watch list i hope you learned a lot it's 6 30 our one hour is time's up thank you guys uh don't forget to subscribe to our channel uh I don't see any questions, so signing out. Thank you, guys. Just uh, subscribe to Awesome 10X channel and, and find all of our videos. Hope that it helps you. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. All right.